Hey folks, in this episode I'm going to show you how to make this geometry nodes proximity effect. As you can see, it affects the location and rotation of these tiles. You can use this node setup for a plethora of different projects. So without further ado, let's get to it. So open up Blender. So we go to Edit, Preferences and under Add-ons, we're going to search for Node and then enable the Node Wrangler here. Click this button, click Save Preferences and that will ensure the Node Wrangler loads every time we load Blender. I'll also navigate over here to my Output tab and I'm going to change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. Make sure you've got your timeline open. If you haven't got your timeline open, simply take your cursor to the bottom left of your 3D viewport until you see a crosshair. Left click, drag, and then click this button here and change it from 3D viewport to timeline. I've already got my timeline open, so I'm going to take my cursor to the bottom left of my 3D viewport until I see the crosshair. I'll left click, drag, and then release, and that will collapse that window. When you've got your timeline open, Go to your end frame over here and set it to 240 frames. I'm going to go to my outliner. I'm going to select the default light and I'm going to hit delete. I'll then select my default cube. I'm going to tab into edit mode. We'll select all the vertices. I'll then hit SZ.1 and then hit enter. And that will scale it down on the Z axis by 0.1. I'll tab out of edit mode. I'm going to go to my outliner and I'll rename the default cube to tile. In my outliner, I'm going to hide that object by clicking this eye icon. In the 3D viewport, I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm going to go Mesh and I'm going to add a plane. And in my outliner, I'm going to rename that plane to GN Dynamic Tiles for GeoNodes Dynamic Tiles. I then take my cursor to the bottom left of the 3D viewport until I see the crosshair. I'm going to left click and I'm going to drag up. I'm going to change this window from the 3D viewport to the Geometry Nodes Editor. I'll then click New. I'll rename the Geometry Nodes to GN Dynamic Tiles. I just hit N to close the end panel. I'll drag the group input over to here. Maybe we can make this window a bit smaller. So the idea is we're going to instance our tile across a grid. So let's add a grid. So I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm going to go to Mesh. We'll go to Primitives and I'm going to choose Grid. I'll connect the grid to the group output. For the size on X and Y, I'm going to type in 48 for 48 meters. And for the vertice count for X and Y, I'm going to type in 48. So I'll just zoom out. I'll go into Wireframe View. So I want to turn each of these vertices into points. To do that, I'm going to hit Shift A, I'm going to go Mesh, we'll go Operations, and we'll choose Mesh to Points, and I'll pop that in between there. I'll then hit Shift A, Instances, Instance on Points, and the Instance object will be our Tile, so I'll enable the Tile in the Outliner, and I'll drag the Tile over into the Geometry Nodes Editor window. I'll just mute that Tile again. I'll then connect the Geometry Socket from the Object Info into the Instance Socket of the Instance on Points, and we've got our Tiles. Excellent. Maybe I can reduce the scale down to, let's say, 0.5. In the 3D viewport, I'm just going to hit numpad 7 to go into top view. I'll zoom in and you can see we've got a slight gap, which is absolutely fine. We're going to add an empty object into the scene, which we'll use as a proximity object. So I'm going to hit Shift A, I'm going to go empty and I'm going to choose sphere. In your outliner, I'm going to rename this object to proximity empty. I'll then select the GN dynamic tiles. I'll then drag this proximity empty into the geometry nodes node tree. If we want the empty to affect the position of the tiles, we're going to have to add a set position node. So we hit Shift A, we go to Geometry, we go to Right, and we go Set Position. And I'll pop that in between the instance on points and the group output. And we're going to manipulate this offset here, but only on the Z axis. So I'm just going to scroll down to my object info where we've got the proximity empty object. I hit Shift A, I'm going to go Mesh, we go Primitives, and I'm going to choose Mesh Line. I'll pop that there. Shift A, I'm going to go to Geometry, Sample, and we'll choose Geometry Proximity, and I'll pop that there. We're going to change it from Faces to Points because we're working with points. And because we only want to manipulate the Z axes, I'm going to add a Combine XYZ. So that's Shift A, we go to Utilities, we go to Vector, and we'll choose Combine XYZ. I'm going to connect the Location Socket to the Start Location of the Mesh Line. I'll connect this socket to the Geometry Socket, and I'll connect the Distance Socket from the Geometry Proximity into the Z Socket of the Combine XYZ. I'll just increase this window. Maybe I'll drag this set position down and I'm going to connect this vector into the offset of the set position node. As you can see, we've got a result here. Now we just need to remap these distance values. So I'm going to drag my combine XYZ over to here. So we go Shift A, go to Utilities, go to Math and we'll choose Map Range. And I'll pop that in between the Geometry Proximity and the Combine XYZ. For the minimum value, I'm going to set to 3. The maximum value, I'm going to keep it 1. The 2 min, I'll keep it 0 for now. And the 2 max, I'm going to set to 2. Okay, let me just increase this window. So the way to look at this is the from min will be the radius of which the proximity is affected the tiles. The from max is the plateau of the tiles. 
and the two max is the amplitude of how high the tiles will travel we've also got the two min which is the base level of all the tiles we're going to use the two min for rotation a bit later in fact let's do that now so i'm going to box select these two nodes here i'm going to hit g I'll just drag these across over to here maybe i'll bring my combined xyz over here as well i'll then hit shift a i'm going to go to instances and we'll choose rotate instances and I'll pop that in between the instance on points and the set position node. I'll then hit shift A. I'm going to go to utilities and I'm going to choose random value. I'm going to change this from float to vector because we're working in vectors. I'll set the minimum for X, Y and Z to minus one and we'll keep the max set to one. I'll then connect that into the rotation socket of the rotate instances node. I'll just drag this across. I'll hit shift A, we'll go to utilities, we'll go to vector and we'll choose vector math. We're gonna change this from add to scale and I'll pop that in between the random value node and the rotate instances node. So now we've got this scale value, which we can drive using the proximity of the empty object. And we achieve that by taking the result from this map range node and plugging it into the scale of the vector math node. I'm gonna hold down shift, right click and drag in between these noodle points. I'll then hit G, just drag them across over to here. Now, if I select this empty object, so now if I hit G, Shift Z to drag it on every axis, excluding the Z axis, you can see that the tiles are displacing and rotating based on the proximity of this object. I'll just right click that back in place. The animation is a bit smooth. I want these tiles to jiggle a bit before they lift off. So I'm gonna select my tile object. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, go to utilities, go to vector, and we'll choose vector curves. And I'll pop that after the map range node. I'll just zoom in. We're going to add a couple of control points here. So I'm going to add one here. Try and get it as close to that line as you can on that crosshair. I'm going to add another one down here, which we're going to keep on this crosshair. Add one here. I'm going to add one. I'll just drag this down and I'll add one more down, let's say around about here. As you can see, these edge ones have slightly displaced. So now if I grab this empty object, so I hit G, Shift Z, and you can see there's a slight wobble before they land and take off. Excellent. I'll reselect the tile object. Maybe I can take this control point here and I'll hit control X and we'll dissolve that control point. I want to be able to store the proximity data to use as a mask in the shader editor. So I hit shift A, I'm going to go attribute and I'll choose store named attribute and I'll pop that in between the set position node and the group output. We're going to change this from float to color and I want to change it from point to instance and that proximity data will come from this combined XYZ which we'll plug into the value socket. Now we just need to give this a name. You can call this anything you like. I'm going to call mine subscribe i'll then navigate to my material tab over here i've already got a default material set in blender so i'm going to set that material if you haven't click new i'll then rename this material to one i'll then hit shift a we go to material and we choose set material and i pop that in between there and for the material we're going to set that material to one okay we're done with the geometry nodes now before we continue i'm going to go to file we'll choose save as and i'm going to save mine as like and subscribe. Thanks folks, you absolute legends. And then click save as. I'll now change the geometry nodes editor to the shader editor. And this is material one. So I'm gonna increase the metallic to 100%. I'm gonna set the roughness to let's say 0.333. I'll then hit shift A. I'm gonna go color and I'll choose mixed color. I'll pop that there. For the top color, I'm gonna choose like a magenta color, something around there. And for the bottom color, I'm gonna choose kind of a blue, maybe something around there. And remember, we stored the attribute data. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, I'm gonna to go to input and we'll choose attribute. I'll pop that down there. I gave my attribute a name of subscribe. For this to work, you have to type the exact name as you gave your store named attribute node. If you can't remember, just take your cursor to the top left until you see the crosshair. Left click and drag to open up a new window. Change this to geometry node editor. Go to your store named attribute, hover your cursor over the name and hit control C and then go to your attribute node in your shader editor, hover your cursor over there and hit control V. I'll just take my cursor to the top left of my shader editor, left click and drag and collapse that window. And now I'll drag this factor into the factor of the mixed color node and I'll plug the result from the mixed color node into the base color of my principal BSDF. Let's just go into viewport shading. You won't see much happening because we're going to have to add a color ramp to crunch in these numbers. So I hit shift A, I'm going to go converter and I'll choose color ramp and I'll pop that in between the attribute node and the mixed color node. We're also going to have to change this from geometry to instancer. And now if you drag this white flag across, you can see the effect that it's having. I actually want my base tiles to be blue and the proximity tiles to be magenta. So I hit shift A, I'm going to go to color and I'm going to choose invert color and I'll pop that in between there. Excellent. I'll just increase this window here. I'm going to hit shift A. I'm going to go mesh and I'm going to choose plane. I'm going to hit numpad seven to go into top view. I'll then hit S25 and hit enter. And that's to scale it up by 25. I hit numpad one to go into front view. I'll just zoom in a bit more. I'm going to hit G, Z, hold down control, snap it to the grid. 
and I'll drag it down to round about there. Excellent. We'll give this a material now. So in your shader editor, click new. I'm gonna rename this material to two. I'm gonna change the color to a light blue, something around there perhaps. I'm gonna set the metallic to 0.5. I'll set the roughness to 100%. Now I want to randomize these tiles a bit. So with your tile object selected, switch from your shader editor to your geometry node editor. Locate your map range node down here. And the two min will give your base tiles a randomization. So I'm gonna set my two minimum to 0.05. I'll just disable my overlays so you can see what that's doing. Okay, excellent. I'll re-enable my overlays. I'm gonna hit Shift C to recenter my cursor to the center of the world. I'll then navigate to the render tab over here. I'm gonna change it from EV to cycles. I'll then go to my world settings tab over here. I'm gonna turn the strength down to zero. I'll then hit Shift A. I'm gonna go light and I'm gonna choose point. I hit numpad one to go into front view. I'm gonna hit G, Z, hold down control, snap it to the grid and we'll bring it up one meter. So if you go to your object data tab over here, you can see that it's on the Z axis by one meter. Excellent. I'm just gonna go into rendered view. And with your point light selected, we're gonna to navigate to the light data tab over here. And I'm gonna set the power to 250 watts. Maybe I'll give it an orange color. I'll then hit shift A. I'm gonna go light and I'm gonna choose sun. I'm gonna hit numpad one to go into front view. G, Z, just gonna drag this up out of the way. And to soften the shadows of the sun lamp, I'm gonna change the angle to 75 degrees. I'm gonna to go to my object data over here and change the direction to, let's say, negative 45 degrees. We should probably set the camera up before we finalize the lighting. So I'm gonna select this empty object. I'm gonna hit numpad one, numpad period, and that will center the view to the object. I'll then hit control out numpad zero, and that will align the camera to the 3D viewport. I'm gonna select my camera. I'm gonna make sure that the X location is set to zero on the Z axis. I'm gonna to set to, let's say seven meters and I'll bring it back on the Y axis by negative nine for now. I'm gonna to go to my camera data tab over here. I'm gonna set it to 50 mil. I'll go back to my object data and I'll reduce the X rotation. Maybe I'll bring it back on the Y axis by 11 meters. I'm gonna increase the X rotation to, let's say an all round number. I'll go 60 degrees. I think I'm gonna drag it back on the y-axis by one more meter. Okay, I'll be happy with that. I'll navigate over to my output data tab over here and I'll enable render region. So only the camera is rendered. I'll then reselect my sun lamp in my outliner. I'm gonna to go to object data and I'm gonna change the X rotation to let's say negative 90 degrees. That will give us nice shadows on these tiles. I'm gonna hit control S just to save the project. I'll now select my proximity empty object. Maybe I'll just go into viewport shading. I'll click this button here and I'll enable scene lights and scene world. So if your proximity empty object and your frames are set to frame one on your timeline for the X location, I'm gonna add a keyframe and I'll add a keyframe for the Y location. I'll then change this window from geometry nodes to graph editor. I'll expand the proximity empty action data, expand the object transform data, and these are the two keyframes that we added. So I'm gonna select the X location. I'm gonna navigate over to the right to the end panel. I'm gonna click modifiers. I'll click add modifier and I'm gonna select noise. I'm gonna change the scale to let's say 50 and maybe I'll set a strength of let's say 25. So now if I hit play, the X location of the empty is being generated by this noise modifier. But the thing is, I want this to loop seamlessly. So if you see, it jumps at the end. That's easy to loop. We we'll just navigate to the noise modifier. I'll enable restrict frame range. We'll expand these options here. We're gonna start on frame one. We're gonna end on frame 240. I want it to blend in over 60 frames and blend out over 60 frames. So now the beginning and the end start on zero. I'll scroll up. I'm gonna click this button here, which is copy modifier. I'll then select the Y location. I'll then click this button here and that will paste the modifier. So the only thing we have to do now is change the offset. So I'm gonna set this to 333. I'll then hit play. Okay, excellent. So now we need to parent the point light and the camera to this empty object. So I'm just gonna go into viewport shading. I'm gonna select my camera. I'll then shift select this point light and last but not least I'll shift select the empty object. I'll then hit control P and we'll choose set parent to object keep transform. So now if I push play you can see that the lamp and the camera are parented to the empty object. So I'll just hit numpad zero to go into camera view and that's what we've got. Excellent. I'm going to skip back to frame one. I'm going to go to my outliner and re-enable the tile. I'm just going to select that tile. I'm going to hit numpad one to go into front view. 
I hit G, Z, hold down control, snap it to the grid, and I bring it down to here. That's because we don't want to see it in the scene. I hit numpad zero to go into camera view. I'm gonna to go to my render tab over here. I'll change my render noise threshold to 0.025, and I'll set a max samples of 1024. Okay, just gonna scroll down until it says light paths. I'll scroll down a bit more, and I'm gonna disable reflective and refractive core sticks. I'll then switch over to my compositing tab up here. I'm gonna click use nodes. I hit N to open up the end panel. I'm gonna go view. Make sure that you've got backdrop enabled. I'll then hit N to close the end panel. Control, shift, and left click select the render layers, and that will add a viewer node. I'll bring that over to here. I'm gonna hold down shift, right click, and drag, and that will create a control point in between those two noodles. Let's just hit G, and drag this over to here. I'll drag my render layers over to here. I'll just go back into my layout view. I'm gonna hit Control S to save the project. I'm gonna select my point light. I'm gonna hit Shift S and we'll choose cursor to selected. I'll then hit Shift A. I'm gonna go mesh and I'm gonna choose icosphere. I'm gonna to navigate to the icosphere options down here. We'll expand that window and I'm gonna choose a subdivision level of four. Hit enter. I'll then collapse these options. I'm gonna right click and choose shade smooth. I'll then tab into edit mode. Ensure that you've got all the vertices selected and then hit S.25, hit enter. I'll then tab out of edit mode. I'm gonna to navigate to my graph editor down here and I'm gonna switch it from the graph editor to the shader editor. I'm gonna click new and we'll rename this material to three. I'm gonna hit numpad period to zoom in to the nodes. Delete the principal BSDF. I'm gonna hit shift A, I'm gonna go shader and we'll choose emission shader. I'll pop that there. I'll connect the emission socket to the material output. I'm gonna change this to an orange color and I'm gonna set the strength to four. Now we're going to rendered view. As you can see, this icosphere is interfering with the point light. It's basically casting a shadow because the point light is inside. That's an easy enough fix. We're just gonna go over to our object data over here. You're gonna scroll down until you see visibility, expand those options, scroll down a bit more, and then disable shadows. And now our icosphere is no longer disrupting the rays of the point light. So with your icosphere selected, hold down shift, left click select the empty object and hit control P and we'll choose set parent to object keep transform. I'll then hit numpad zero to go into camera view. I'm just gonna select a random frame, maybe something around there perhaps. Just gonna go into viewport shading over here. I'm gonna hit F12 and that will render out a preview. I'm gonna close that window. I'm gonna to navigate to my compositing tab. I'm gonna hit N to open up the end panel and I'm gonna click fit under the view tab here. I'll then hit Shift A, I'm gonna go Filter, and we'll choose Glare, and I'll pop that in between there. I'm gonna change it from Streaks to Fog Glow. I'm gonna change the strength to, let's say, 0.5. We're now gonna add a vignette, Shift A. I'm gonna go Color, we'll choose Mix, and we'll go Mix Color. I'll pop that there. I'm gonna swap the image socket into the bottom socket. I'm gonna change the top socket to Black. I'll then hit Shift A, we'll go Mask, and we'll choose Ellipse Mask. I'll pop that there. Maybe I'll increase the width to something around about there, perhaps and I'll increase the height to something around about there. I'll then plug the mask into the factor of the mixed color node, and that's created a mask. We just need to blur that mask. So I'll hit Shift A, we go Filter, Blur, and we choose Blur. I'll pop that in between the Ellipse mask and the color mix node. I'll change it from Gaussian to Fast Gaussian. We'll enable Relative, and we'll set the X and Y to 25%. I'll navigate to my Layout tab over here. One final step before this is ready to render. We're gonna choose our tile object. I'll hit Numpad Period to zoom into that object. I'll just go into Viewport Shading. We'll add a bevel modifier to this just to improve the overall aesthetics. So navigate to your modifier tab over here, click add modifier, go to generate and choose bevel. We'll set the bevel amount to 0.025 and maybe I'll set the cuts to four. I'll just hit numpad zero to go into camera view. I'll then reselect my camera. I'll navigate to my output tab over here. I'm gonna scroll down. If you're an EV, you can set yours as a movie clip, which is FFmpeg and then go to encoding, change it from Matroski to MPEG-4 with a codec of H.264. That will be sufficient. If you're using cycles and you're happy with your final image, you can change this to PNG, which is a lossless file format. I'm gonna set my file format to OpenEXR with a codec of DWAA lossy, and that will decrease my file size whilst increasing my dynamic range for post-production. And then choose an output location of your choice. And when you've chosen an output location, click accept. And then it's simply a case of hitting Control F12, and that will render out your image sequence. If you join me on Patreon as a free member, you'll have access to this Blender file alongside other Blender files and assets. That's the tutorial in a nutshell. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please click like and subscribe. It really helps my channel. Have a great day, level up, and thanks for watching.